kudos to President Trump. He did something very courageous yesterday. He withdrew the United States from the unconstitutional Paris Accord. And one of the things I really liked about what Trump did yesterday is he spoke plainly and straightforwardly to the American people, without a rally, without the noise. And he just was very comfortable in doing it, explaining the economic impact that this would have on America, explaining how it was all give, we give and they take, uh, the negative consequences to our economy, to jobs in America, uh, to the material wealth of Americans, hundreds of billions of dollars transferred from us to other countries in the third world. We'd be carrying most of the burden. China gets a pass, India gets a pass, and of course they create the most pollution. They have the most people. And we've done a hell of a job, by the way, in reducing so-called CO2 emissions, uh, carbon dioxide which, by the way, is not a pollutant. I'm reaching a point where I'm concerned we're reducing it too much. I know, that's me. Why? Because we need plants, ladies and gentlemen. And we don't have plants, we don't have oxygen. It's that simple. And a little bit more CO2, maybe some of our deserts would become more plentiful. Uh, but it's, it's very strange how, how the left thinks that mankind can manage the climate when they can't even manage Social Security and Medicare and Obamacare and the border and all the rest of it. It's an amazing thing. And they're talking about transferring over time trillions of dollars out of our economy to the third world, the undeveloped world. We're considered the overdeveloped world. I'm not kidding. We're considered overdeveloped, and there needs to be a degrowth movement that is an attack on capitalism. We're going to get to all this. We're going to get to all this. But I first want you to hear just a minute or so of Donald Trump from yesterday, and we'll take it from there. Go. In order to fulfill <clears throat> my solemn duty to protect America and its citizens, the United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord Thank you. Thank you. But begin negotiations to re-enter either the Paris Accord or in really entirely new transaction on terms that are fair to the United States, its businesses, its workers, its people, its taxpayers. So we're getting out, but we will start to negotiate and we will see if we can make a deal that's fair. And if we can, that's great. Mm -hmm. And if we can't, that's fine. <laughs> I love that. And we can't because already Italy, France, and Germany said, nah, we're not doing this again. Well, good, screw you. We don't have to do it again. <clears throat> it doesn't bother me. 11 of the most over-the-top responses to Trump's climate accord. This is from the Daily Wire. Let's take a look at this. <clears throat> the ACLU called the move an assault on communities of color. Uh, how so? Oh, who cares? Senator Chris Murphy, this guy's always a kook, tweeted out an apology to the planet. Dear planet, we're sorry. Please just hang on for three and a half more years and we'll fix this, we promise. Guy's a goofball. Next one. Down a little bit. Leftist billionaire, Tom Steyer. If Trump pulls the U.S. out of the Paris Agreement, he will be committing a traitorous act of war against the American people. You kids out there, you can be stupid and become a billionaire, too. See how that works? Next one, Oliver Darcy, Huffington Post right now. Trump the planet, drop dead. Oh, how clever. Next. Number five, Vice News Editor Chelsea Combs, or is it Combs, or do we care, tweeted that our children will all die. Your kids are going to die from climate change after we pull out of the Paris climate deal, too. Kind of an idiot. Then we have Trita Parsi of the National Iranian American Council. Wow, that's an authority. Trump just declared war on the very bad idea of life on Earth. What? Next one. Let's see. You can never get enough of Trita Parsi. Keep going. All right. CNN's Fareed Zakaria, that guy's a plagiarist, as I recall, said that America is no longer the leader of the free world. 
Why? Because we pulled out of this stupid deal? Number eight, Democratic congressional candidate John Ossoff stated that history will condemn us for leaving a Paris climate accord. Next one. Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Is that a perfume? Decided to leave Trump's advisory council. Bye. Good riddance. Don't let the door slam me in the ass. Next one. John Kerry. Next one. Number 11. DeRay McKesson. I don't know. Cried racism. Trump is determined to undo every possible thing that the first black president ever did, piece by piece. Oh, they figured him out. They figured him out. I'm sure that guy supported Clarence Thomas for the Supreme Court, too. So you get all the usual liberal crap about racism and economics and all the kids are going to die and all the rest. It's really a sick group, if you come to think of it. But speaking of that, Al Gore. What did Al Gore have to say? And what did people say to Al Gore when he said it? Let's check this out. This is entertaining. Go. Al Gore, my statement on today's decision, let me do my Al Gore. <coughs> Guy's like 312 pounds. Uh, speaking of flatulence there, uh, fella, my state on today's decision statement, uh, the Trump administration to withdraw from the Paris Agreement. And I can't do Forrest Gump, but you, you get it. Removing the United States from the Paris Agreement is reckless and indefensible. It undermines America's standing in the world and threatens to damage humanity's ability to solve the climate crisis in time. This guy who's made like $200 million off this fraud. But make no mistake, if President Trump won't lead, the American people will. Civic leaders, mayors, governors, CEOs, investors, and the majority of the business community will take up this challenge. We're in the middle of a clean energy revolution that no single person or group can stop. President Trump's decision is profoundly in conflict but what the majority of Americans want from our president. But no matter what he does, we will ensure that our inevitable transition to a clean energy economy continues. Idiot. Now some of the responses. Let's see. Majority of Americans stand strong with POTUS. Mr. Gore, next. The election was over more than 200 days ago. Get over the winning nonsense. You've lost your kids and grandkids just lost their future. Oh. Good, Lori. Next. Let's see, USA for Trump. Check out the Constitution for the facts. Elephants everywhere rejoicing today. D.D. Bailey. Uh, let's see, Mano whatever. If the Trump destroys the environment, there won't be any of it. All right, you get it, the back and forth and so forth. Uh, everybody's an expert on the climate now. Have you noticed that? But these Hollywood freaks, these Democrat Party freaks with their statements, all your kids are going to die. And let us not forget Arnold Schwarzenegger, who single-handedly helped destroy the economy of California. Now, he's stupid in two languages, actually, broken English and Austrian. But let's check him out. Go. One man can Stop. destroy. Oy, oy, oy. I don't think even his maid would be interested in him anymore. Just saying. Just saying. Go ahead. Boy, our progress. One man can stop our clean energy revolution, and one man can go back in time. Only I can do that. President Trump says he's pulling out of the Paris Climate Agreement. My message to you, Mr. President, is that as a public servant, especially as a president, your first and most important responsibility is to protect the people. Yeah, we know that. 200,000 people die every year in the U.S. from air pollution. Stop. Where does that come from? What does that mean? Does it mean people get lung cancer or asthma or something like that and they base it on air pollution? Let me tell you something, folks. We have the cleanest air and the cleanest water in any developed country on the face of the earth. Any developed country on the face of the earth. This, this is so psychotic, it's not even funny. And I'll get the funny in a minute. Go ahead. And that half of our rivers and streams are too polluted for our health. We can't sit back and just do nothing. All right, thanks for nothing. 